Hey guys! Welcome back to the Exam Revision YouTube channel. My name is Ellen and today I'm going to be talking about how to get a H1 in chemistry. I know a lot of people struggle with chemistry, especially to get to that H1 standard. I know a lot of people can get up to that H2, H3 standard. I think to just get to the H1 standard is just a different kettle of fish. But I'm here to tell you how to do it. I did it personally and I found it quite easy to do so because I followed certain rules and certain stuff that I learned off and I'm here to share it all with you today. Personally, I think the most important part of chemistry is understanding the material. In comparison to biology, biology you can learn stuff off, rope learn, spit it back onto the page, you don't really need to understand what's going on that much. Chemistry is so completely different, you need to know exactly what's going on in order to answer questions. You can't learn stuff off really, there's only a couple of questions you'll be able to answer if you just rope learn. A lot of it you need to understand and honestly that is the most important part. You need to understand it so well that you will be able to teach someone else that material. So if you don't know if you've gone to that point yet, try teaching someone the material, like your mom, your dad, anyone, they might not have a clue what you're saying, but if you can explain to them exactly what's happening and what you know, and they can kind of grasp that, then you're on the road to acing chemistry. I feel like in chemistry, especially to understand, you really need to have a great teacher. Some people are lucky and have a great teacher. I was extremely lucky and had an amazing teacher and I was able to ask anything I needed to. And there was absolutely no judgment. But if you might not have the best teacher, it just depends on the school. You need to really use your resources. Exam Revision have amazing video lessons that you can rewind, rewatch as many times as you need to they're all exam focused and all based around exam questions. They also have quizzes, exam questions, presentations, notes, everything. So if you don't feel like you're understanding the material in class and how the way your teacher is teaching you the material, definitely check out the exam vision chemistry course because that will definitely help you understand. Because if you don't have a good teacher and you don't think you're understanding material, then you're you're screwed. You really, really need to understand the material. I just can't stress that enough. Definitely check out exam vision. I will link them down below because if you don't have a great teacher, they will be a lifesaver. Also, don't be learning material from the books. They're useless. The books contain so much information that is so useless, like talking about scientists and their name and their date of birth and where they lived. It's just so useless and you will never get asked that in an exam. If you're like confused about like experiments, there is a ton of videos online like doing the experiments, like actually demonstrating them. I think they're by Edco, so I would definitely check them out as well. Personally, I think if you can understand chapters two, three, four, five, and six, which is like the history of the atom, uh, bonding, intermolecular bonding, electronegativity. I feel like if you really understand what's going on in those chapters, you will be so fine to understand what's going on in all the other chapters. Because you have to start learning organic chemistry without understanding chapters two, three, four, five, and six, because you really need them as a basis. If you're completely lost with chemistry and you don't know what's going on, focus on chapters two, three, four, five, and six. You might not have even covered them all yet, but they are definitely the basis for everything. Please ask your teacher questions. They could be the stupidest question ever. I have asked my chemistry teacher so many questions that are ridiculous and stupid. Well, you might think they're stupid, but I'd say about 50% of the class have the exact same question. Just ask the stupid questions. You don't want to think you know a topic because you've listened to your teacher and you understand kind of the material, but you have lots of questions about it. You need to ask the questions. You need to have all those questions in your head that's floating around that you're like, mm, the what ifs, the what are. You need to have those all answered. You cannot have any doubt when it comes to chemistry. You're gonna have questions. The teacher knows that, especially in chemistry. These are all brand new ideas that no one has ever been taught before. So just ask the stupid questions. I promise it will help so much. Just to clear those up in your head. So you're not gonna have doubts then when you are answering exam questions. Now, obviously it's great if you understand the material, but the next step is obviously putting it into your head. I know a lot of chemistry teachers hand out their own notes, which is great. Mine did personally, and most of the chemistry teachers in my school did. If your teacher does not, exam revision have patron center notes all based around the exams. You can use those, print them out, put them into your folder they will be great. Because writing your own notes in chemistry would take a lot of time. But writing flashcards in chemistry, oh, the best thing ever. I talked about this last week in my how to get a H1 in biology video, but the big flashcards you can get, not the like little small ones, you wanna get the big chunky ones. You can use like one flashcard for each chapter because you're only writing down the material that is exam focused and what you're gonna be asked in the exam. None of the stupid stuff. I remember I had a flashcard for chapter two. My notes are now gone because I did the leaving cert like three years ago. But I had one singular big flashcard for chapter two and I had eight points on the flashcard of everything that was important and anything I would get asked. I don't need to know stupid things by Dalton and where he was born, I don't care. They say this all in the book or your teacher's notes might include that. 
You don't need to know, it's not important. Only write down the important stuff. There's no point filling your brain with unimportant stuff you're not gonna get asked. So for each chapter, you might have one, two, three, however big the chapter is, amount of flashcards, and you need to be writing down all of the exam-worthy information. So then right before your exam, a couple of days before, a couple of weeks before, whatever, you can scan through all those flashcards again. And honestly, even writing flashcards helps me learn. Everyone is different, but like writing down the flashcards, I would make them look really pretty and really aesthetic. And I had about a million color highlighters, which is not necessary, but for some people it does help. And I honestly think just like writing out those flashcards and I'm not just like writing them, like copying the notes, like writing them down. I'm understanding exactly what I'm writing. And if you need a certain way to phrase it, to like help yourself understand, you can write yourself little notes. Definitely write down the answer that they would want in the exam, but you can write yourself little notes to explain why that is the answer. Flashcards are honestly a blessing in chemistry. I would highly recommend them. Exam questions in chemistry are so important. I know your teacher probably says this all the time, but they honestly are. Let's say you know that you're gonna do question five in the exam, which is usually like the history of the atom, bonding, intermolecular bonding, all that kind of stuff. If you know you're gonna choose that exam question on the day, you better be doing every single question five that has come up in the past 10, 15 years, and every mock question that has come up in the past 10 or 15 years. You need to be doing all the question fives. This applies to all questions, I'm just using question five as an example. You need to go through every single question five and answer every single question. Every couple of years, there might be like a dodgy question thrown in, trying to throw you off. Those are the questions that are important and you need to understand. I would say a piece of paper or even on the flashcard for that chapter, I would write down that question and write down the answer. You might be able to memorize it because if you don't really understand it and if it's a bit of a dodgy question, that's fine, but you can memorize it so if it does come up on your exam, which is likely, then you know the answer. Because you need to know exactly all of the questions they can ask you in question five and be prepared to answer them. So when you go in, you should be able to get 100% in question five because you've so much experience in it and you've literally answered every question they can possibly ask you. This also applies to titrations. Titrations in chemistry are literally everywhere. Everything is a titration. And the titration questions are all the same. How to clean a pipette, how to clean this, how to measure this. They're all the exact same. Obviously it's boring material. No one wants to learn about how to clean something, but they're so repetitive. You can literally learn all of that off. So definitely the titrations, the first part anyway, is just like biology. You rope learn it off and you spit it back down on the page. You make sure you're including every single point to get full marks in that question. Obviously in the titrations there is like a math section. I will put up on the screen here the equations I literally use for like everything in chemistry. You can like move this formula around a million different ways in order to pretty much answer every single maths question in chemistry. So I would highly recommend using that, jotting it down. It's very important. I use it the whole time and it will pretty much answer every single titration maths question. Anyway, I really hope this video helps you guys out. Honestly, you need to be really confident in order to get a H1 in chemistry. You need to believe you can get a H1. You can't just be going to class and doodling and not really listening. You need to be listening to your teacher constantly. You never know when they're going to say something important that will actually be on the exam. But I will tell you, chemistry is so easy to get a H1 if you put the work in and if you're studying correctly. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys very soon, but good luck in chemistry. Bye!